Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of The Probe. It was a weekend where Wazo met Akwaba. Wazo also met Nyehao Manye, Nyo Manya Blao. It was a weekend where rich culture once again went on display with a clarion call for unity, national cohesion and development. It was a historic weekend by all standards where divisive and destructive tribal lines that have undermined the true nationhood of Ghana were blurred, if not wiped out completely. The Yangwo Mafia of the Yangwo traditional area, Togbi Sri III, in a historic fashion, hosted the Asantehene Otum Fosse to the second at the 60th anniversary of Hogbe Chocho Festival on the theme that we've been talking about, um, you know, unity amongst others. That's not all. The Ga Manche Ni Taki the second and Dasibre Ekuyamwa e Japon, the second of Akuzakuhine, were in attendance as well as at the Grand Deba, all with a call for national unity. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, also led the government delegation to the event as well. I'll bring you highlights of the event if you missed out on it, but tonight we take a look at how to leverage cultural capital out of such a historic event for national development and the development of regions where such great festivals are held. And tonight we focus on the Volta region because the Hogwa Chocho and also the Yam Festival, which was celebrated by the people of Asogli in September this year, have all happened over the period. And your input, as always, is very much needed. We're live on Joy News. Joy 99.7 FM. We are on DSTV channel 421. Go TV is 144. We are live on myjoyonline.com and all our social media platforms. It's a good time to call every ever V. And then also, if you attended the Hogwe Chocho Festival, it's time to gather around. If you didn't also, it's time for some history lessons. I'm sure you'll be interested in it. Please stay with us. This is The Probe. I am MFA Apau. I introduce my guest to you right after the break. Please. Stay with me. The president is leading us. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we have not been able to celebrate the Hobancho Chosa. But God has made it possible this year. The Russian-Ukraine war has also worsened the situation, making our currency lose its value. This is making life unbearable for the Ghanaian. When Pamela Abeli Bedema formed now, national alliance of he find the man to be his right man as national chairman. The person he found to be his national chairman was no other than my own brother. Yes, my own brother, by my John Francis Covenant. Sixty 
Yes. Pembangla bukan cucu. Unity and sustaining a unique cultural commonwealth for the future generation. Welcome back. You're still live on The Probe here on the Joy News channel. We're also on Joy 99.7 FM. We're on myjoyonline.com and all our social media platforms. And this evening, we're taking a look at how we can leverage the cultural heritage and then also gain some capital out of it for national development and the areas that these festivals take place. And your input is always very much welcome, especially tonight. And my guests are already via Zoom. Uh, thankfully, I have the Agbutadwa Kumasa. Uh, he is the member of the planning committee for the Hobo Chocho. He's joining us. He's the Agbutadwa to the Te Agbozo Stool. We also have Mr. Alexander Nketia. He's the uh, director for the Ghana Tourism Authority for Volta NOT regions joining us as well. And thankfully, we have Dela Gajanku. He's also the AGI president for Volta OT and Eastern regions. I also have um, joining us via Zoom, Osebun Susafu Katanka. Uh, he is a monarchical historian. Uh, we'll talk about all the history and looking at the panel for tonight it tells you that we're going to look at all the angles when it comes to uh, leveraging this cultural heritage and i must say that we advertised earlier uh, that the regional minister Dr. Archibald Letcher was supposed to be our headline, uh, you know, guest for tonight. But at the last minute, he's had to withdraw uh, from the program for this evening. But that notwithstanding, we still take a look at um, that rich cultural display that we saw over the weekend and how we can leverage the cultural capital for national development. Thank you once again, gentlemen, for joining us here on the program. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, Thank you very you. much. Um, I, I think it's a good time to start with um, Osebon Susafun Kantanka uh, because uh, for obvious reasons, he's a monarchical historian and he joins us via phone. Let's take a look at what we saw. A lot of people have been talking about the Asantehene <clears throat> or two for Seitu's visit uh, to Anglo uh, to grace this Hogwachutu Festival 2022. It's something that most people have not seen before and that's how come it's generated a lot of talk <clears throat> on social media. Ms. Savangatanka, thank you very much for joining us here on the probe this evening. So thank let's take you a look. For having me. Well, let's take a look at what all this means because um, there are those who thought that there's this, um, you know, frosty relationship between the Anglos and the Evers. And to see the Asantehene lead that entourage and be part of the Hobe Chuchu Festival, let's talk about the historic antecedents for this. Have we seen this before? Um, in fact, it's difficult to say uh, it has been so for all those years, except that uh, there was a break of relationship between the Amnons and the Ashanti Kingdom. Uh, throughout history, uh, the ever, uh, the, the section of the ever called Amnon has been um, in linkage, has been very close to the Ashanti Kingdom, and they have uh, found oral pact 
to help um, each other in terms of need, in terms of war, in terms of trade, in terms of um, culture and tradition. Uh, this has just said from the days of uh, Asante King called uh, Kokudia, the first. That was somewhere in 1834, um, uh, between 1834 and 1867. Uh, he started the relationship with the, with the Angros, uh at a time that Asante was engaged fully in wars of expansion and um, trying to expand their territory, north, south, east, and west. Uh, they came in conflict with uh, the, almost the whole of the um, uh, other communities, stretching from today's Ghana to um, uh, Yoruba, that is uh, the Benin, uh, behind, even beyond Benin. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of wars uh, with these uh, groups of other, and uh, they, the uh, Anglans, agreed to help the Asante people in their war. Then there were also uh, occasions when Anglon was engaged in a series of wars with the, with the English, that is the British, uh, the Danes, and even um, Holland. Uh, over, uh, and I think the English, the Danes, and the, and, the, and, the, and the Dutch went on the side of the Ga and the Dangbi, helping them against the, the Anglon. Hmm. Here, the Ashanti also played their part, helping the Anglons to fight uh, this uh, group of people who had united to fight the Anglons. So, uh, in terms of trade, uh, any time the British moved against the Ashantis and tried to stop them from um, getting into getting involved in trade, especially buying firearms. Uh, the Anglons managed to uh, buy firearms and sell it to the Ashanti people. So this went on for a very long time, and uh, this is because the, both the Ashantis and the Anglons were, uh, had a common enemy. The common enemy was the British. Britain wanted to disintegrate the ever community, and uh, and therefore organized the Ghana Dangbis against them. And the Ashanti was also in the same uh, soup. The British organized the rest of the Akan society against the Ashanti. That was strictly divide and rule uh, strategy, which was employed and it worked and a number of times. Mm. Uh, so uh, until in the uh, 1990s, uh, when politicians, uh, who also wanted to play the same game by uh, divide and rule, uh, uh, played the other community against the Ashanti. Which politician exactly? No, At what point? Uh, you mentioned 1990 there about. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, around uh, 1980s. People started writing uh, literature, trying to uh, create... Uh, confusion between the uh, other community and the Ashanti community. To, to what end exactly? To, but to the what practical end? aspect started in the 1990s. Mm. To what end exactly, you'd say? I beg your pardon? To what end? At that point, you said that there was a politician that was trying to play uh, that uh, tribal no, card between uh, the Ashanti and the... I don't mean a particular political party or a particular uh, politician. Politics, as a matter of fact, had its own way of uh, uh, wanting to gain uh, dominion over uh, other people. And okay. one of their strategies has always been uh, divide and rule. So uh, if we remember the days when uh, somebody like uh, Professor Awon wrote a book, uh, uh, The Ghana Revolution, it was all to divide and rule. Okay. And somebody uh, like Rawlings uh, also put it into practice. And before the death of Rawlings, he was um, a very close associate of the Ashanti King and all the uh, and the kingdom itself. So people do things without actually uh, realize what they are doing. And the only sad and unfortunate thing is that uh, the, the youth who 
um, get involved in these things, do it with their hearts, uh, so that um, uh, you, all that you notice is that it has consumed the whole community, mm -hmm. uh, all that they know, I don't like this group, this group will also say I don't like this group. Uh, so if today, um, uh, Togo Street and uh, Utumpua Shadihine have agreed, and you can see that practically, because those of us who live in the Ashanti region have noticed with, with um, much happiness uh, the, 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 the constant visit of Togo City and its people uh, had trying to uh, cement relationship and then trying to visit the ancient way, uh, the, the old days when uh, the Onglo and Ashanti were very close. You agree with me, and everybody knows that uh, there is a, a section of the of the Kumasi community called Angloga. Mm -hmm. uh, this Angloga is a very big place, a very big town within the Kumasi community. The Angloga was established in the days of Asadene Kofi Kakeri. Uh, it started from the days of Asadene Kokudia the first, but it was it reached its apogee uh, at. Uh, the time of Asantehine's Kofi Kakeri, uh, when the uh, people were brought from the from Anglo, uh, to settle at uh, the, uh, at Kumasi, the heart of Kumasi, uh, some people make the mistake of saying that it was a war, war of conquer. No, okay. that is not the case. It is agreement between the Anglo people and the Ashanti people. Uh, for the uh, Anglons to settle in Kumasi. Okay. Uh, well, with, with, with that history in mind, I, I know that definitely subsequently we'll get to have an extensive one with you and then we can get into all the details. But fast oh. forward into what happened yesterday and what clear message it sends and going forward, the relationship that there will be, that will exist between uh, the Ashantis and the Anglons for the generations yet yes. to come. Let's talk what about happened, it. What happened yesterday was... Uh, a very beautiful uh, ceremony and a well-organized and beautiful ceremony, uh, which brought over 500 people from Kumasi to join their brothers uh, at Anglonga to celebrate the, the Wachucho festival. And those who did not even know uh, anything about uh, the uh, Evers the saw it yesterday and were very pleased uh, some, if you got closer to people, say, oh, so are these people so nice that we, uh, and unfortunately we have been told uh, negative things about them. So you notice that the, uh, uh, the visit yesterday of Otumfo is, uh, is to clear some of the bad uh, information um, uh, which is uh, going around everywhere in this country. That is one, two. Uh, it was so beautiful to a degree that uh, uh, some people um, have now realized that they also have to do things. Other nations that came, like uh, we saw Kau, we saw uh, uh, Ghan, we saw other, other nation states that were present yesterday, and those who got closer to them made them feel uh, they they uh, heard a number of people say that, okay, they also do say. And then if we start doing that, then, then there is a the natural tendency okay. of uh, calming down uh, situations in the country. Okay. And it will consume or it will actually erode all the evil thinking that uh, does exist in this country. So the coming uh, together of these two uh, uh, friends, or brothers, I would say. Uh, one ever professor wrote that uh, is Adam Four, which is friends. Mm -hmm. But I think it is beyond friendship. Okay. Uh, it used to be friendship.
but today is brotherhood. Okay. We are grateful indeed for your time. That's um, Osebu Nsusafu Kantanka. He's a monarchical historian at the main Shia Palace. And we've been talking about what we saw yesterday um, at the Hobwechocho Festival. And thankfully, Agutadua Kumasa, uh, a member of the planning committee for Hobwechocho, is Agutadua Tidete Aguzo families too also joins us uh, on Zoom. Then we can get into how we are leveraging all this that we've seen into, you know, investment for the Volta region as well. Dela Gajanku is with me and also Mr. Alexander Nketia also with the GTA also with me. But let me bring in Agutadua Kumasa. We are grateful uh, once again for your time here uh, on the probe set. So if you can hear me, let's talk about the thinking, the thought process behind Hogwe Chocho at 60 and the selection of the Asante Hene Otunfo say to the second to grace it. We also saw the uh, Ga chief, that's the uh, Ga Manche. Also, we saw the Akwewu uh, Hene also uh, joining us. Let's talk about it. For you, overall, how was Hogwe Chocho at 60? Hello, Agwe Tadra. You have to unmute if you can hear me. Okay, it appears that uh, we, are, we have a technical issue to Abu Tadra Kumasa's um, connection there, but uh, we'll definitely uh, get back to him shortly uh, on this. But let me bring in uh, the Ghana Tourism Authority and then the AGI on this. Then we can get deeper into this. We've seen all the rich culture, the display of it. We've heard the calls for national unity amongst others. But after this, then what? is uh, the key question. We saw the Asogli people uh, celebrate uh, the Yam Festival. Now is the Hobo Chuchu Festival. Mr. Nketia, thank you once again uh, for joining us via Zoom. So then, what are we looking at in the Volta region? We've seen the two festivals. What should we be looking at going forward beyond just the rich display of culture and our heritage? very much for this evening's program and uh, good evening to your uh, watchers uh, those are tuned in yes as you can see and i'm sure you've enjoyed yourself immensely at this program the crowds and everything that came there have been very very immense and um actually this year's own has been very outstanding and so was the teza as well um yes uh, what do we do after this? The benefits that would spin off from here are so immense. I mean, the additional crowd, the numbers that came in are only adding up to look, uh, adding cash or money into the local, local economy and therefore um, boosting the local economy within the environment which, within which the festival took place. But moving forward, I think that we ought to begin to see how we can leverage more on these festivals to create additional investments in our localities. Um, one of the things that I think um, we can do is, and I think that it's something that we've for some time now not been looking at, is that most of these uh, festivals are organized by local planning committees, but who are the members of the local planning committee that can add value to what is even happening at the local level and then at what time do we bring in and uh, bring out our programs for the event sometimes it comes so late that it's even difficult for people to mobilize themselves properly to be part of these events but it's bringing in people most of them are people also who, also are, who are also looking out for investment opportunities mm -hmm. we need to repackage these festivals not just the festival, but also the, the other investment opportunities that exist within these local areas so that we can market it, even not only during the festival, but post-festival. How do we then sell these opportunities out there? Which is what I think is basically not happening. So we can then begin to look at how we can leverage on such numbers coming in. And the numbers, of course, involves a lot of individuals who are investors, who are business folks, and therefore we can begin to see how we can repackage the various opportunities within these um, in the tourism areas or where the festivals are taking place to this um, um, potential investor community that is coming into the area. Well, the issue about 
planning these festivals, for instance, do we have the input or the buy-in of um, stakeholders and institutions like the Ghana Tourism Authority, for instance, the business community, amongst others, or is just the traditional authorities that come together, put it together, and that's it? What really I think takes place currently is the fact that most of the traditional areas have their planning committees and they go ahead and do what they want to do. But oftentimes, most of the state institutions are not even aware of what really is really going on within the planning uh, setup. But that shouldn't uh, negate the fact that um, we still, as state institutions, have a role to play, and therefore it is within our purview to see how we can technically assist uh, the traditional areas to improve upon the activities they do. So yes, uh, we are not technically involved. We used to be some time ago, but I don't know why these days we are not being involved or invited to be part of these uh, planning activities. But I still think that we have a role to play and we can still assist in putting the various packages together so we can have not only just the festival as in the fun, entertainment, and the cultural display, but also being able to, at the same time, market the potential of the area using all these activities that take place within the space. Mm. I'll come back to you on how we can leverage it, really, which is um, the key question that we are hoping to answer before the end of the show, because you know the ins and outs of the Volta region, both the, the Volta and OT region. So we'll take a look at it. But let me bring in Dela Gajanku. He leads the business community for uh, Volta, OT, and of course, the Eastern region as well. That's um, the Association of Ghana Industries. Mr. Gajanku, welcome once again. So let's talk about these festivals. At least you've seen what happens in the Eastern region as against what happens in the OT and then also in the Volta region. You know what pertains elsewhere as well. The concern is beyond the pump and pageantry. Does it end there? How then do we woo investors to such regions after such huge festivals are organized and well attended? Good evening, I'm a fan, Davi, I'm a fan. Um, good evening to your viewers, listeners. As I can also see you really enjoyed yourself over the weekend. <laughs> I think the historic visit of the three chiefs, namely Uchumfo de Santihene, um, the Gamache, the Kumewu Hine, uh, is a watershed moment uh, in the history of celebrating the Obechichu Festival, which is already known for each rich display of culture. Uh, to go back to your question about how we can leverage on such festivals to boost our investment potentials or economic potentials in the region, um, it is worthy to note that even before uh, I want to dwell on our relationships um, within our association and within the business community of uh, City and Volta. In 2019, I led a delegation of uh, my members to Marcy, where they had an Indus affair. And I, we went along with, with us, two cultural groups from our region, who went to display the rich water of our culture to, to our Ashanti colleagues. The following year, our Ashanti chairperson also led a delegation to the fourth water trade forum. We have been building such relationship between the people of Shanti and Volta region on the business uh, sense. Uh, incidentally, whilst this program was going on, we were also so it was an equally important assignment, a similar assignment. And um, we believe that along the way, we could use or we could leverage or we could stand on the platforms of these festivals. They shouldn't just be locations where we meet to display our culture and, and present good speeches, meet people, and then at the end, the following year, we launch another one, and it happens. I'm told that in the sixth year for virtual festival. So what we are trying to do and what we are trying to encourage, which happened recently during the Sunday Young Festival, where the whole municipality interprets 
uh, um, the customer with an export, the trade and investment export. So during the uh, as a as a uh, concurrently on the same Jubilee pack, we were having the whole expo which brought together over 100 SMEs to exhibit their wares, their services, their products uh, from all over the country. And all the visitors who came from Togo, who came from parts of Ghana, also took the opportunity to visit the stands, buy some things, and establish uh, uh, relationships and contacts, business relationships. Uh, during the Hubachucho Festival, earlier on, a month ago, I called from one of uh, uh, the planning committee members who informed us about their intention to, to organize the Keta Expo uh, to coincide with the Hubachucho Festival. Uh, Actually happened, uh, but, but two years ago I was with Botadua, when we launched the Kita Expo, uh, also the Kita Fair, and together with the Kenyan ambassador. So, what we can continue to do, and I'm also aware that the upcoming week in Kosa for the people of Kore, there will be a trade investment uh, expo alongside the fair. We must continue to encourage our traditional priorities, which we, AG, are already building good relationships with. To try and take advantage of these festivals, uh, to market their economic potentials, and to build business relationships so that they can bring economic development to their people and use their festivals as, 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 as a landing pack for, for the development of their communities. So yeah. let's see whether we can use this model of um, uh, holding festivals together with trade and investment expertise. Uh, with the traditional authority, business community, policy makers, uh, to, to boost the economic potential. I think well, that's one way of, of getting this done. Mm. Well, uh, while we try to get you to speak up a bit more, because it, it appears that we don't have a, a very good connection to you, Adela. So if you could just uh, project a bit. But the concern really is these areas are there really business opportunities that investors can you know tap into and how do they even do it when we know that they only come for these festivals you've just heard mr nketia mention that even the key institutions are not involved even in the planning of these festivals then how do people go into these regions for instance and maximize the opportunities are there even opportunities in the volta region to start with I mentioned that as industry players or as business people, we even in the region, Walter region, have from the one tried as much as possible to build good collaborative relationships with the traditional authorities because we believe they are the important people that you know afford much to economic emancipation. So uh, we can uh, we'll continue to do that. We will continue to uh, partner with them and encourage them. I think we can only encourage them. No, I don't. would have to re-establish connection. I think I'm losing you along the line, Dela. But Ms. Lanketia, so the, the, the concern that I was, uh, the question I was put into, Dela, was the issue about whether there are even opportunities in the water region that people can actually leverage on is the issue. But let's stick to tourism for you. Let's talk about the tourism potentials, for instance, in the Anglo area, we're limited to the Anglo area for now, and then we can uh, talk about the entire Volta region, for instance. What is there? Because I know we are, we are still climaxing, still in the Hobechucho mood, for instance. There are still people in the Volta region now who are watching us. What can they do after this whole Deba, pump and pageantry, beach soccer, amongst others? What else is there? Well, I think that beach soccer is also part of it. It's part of uh, sports tourism. It can be encouraged. But there are enormous opportunities in that area. We need, for instance, um, to look at how we can... The land made mention of alongside the festivals, if we could have the exhibitions and fairs that go with it and therefore helps us to expose the various opportunities within that area. But aside that, also is the fact that we can put together, because like I said, if you look at that entire stretch, we have the, what we call the blue uh, economy, that is very critical for that area, but they are within the, a lot of water bodies around that area, what opportunities are there? We need standard 
resource of upmarket level along that entire stretch, which we are not getting. Mm. If we could get a lot of more people coming in to invest within the blue economy along that stretch, it will go a long way because even currently, we are getting an influx of people in virtually during the weekends and sometimes you can't really get accommodation there. So that tells you that the market potential is high. And so if we could get people investing in more of the eco friendly facilities that can draw in more people, having more, yes, the, the river, the, the, the lake is there, you have the, the, the lagoon is there, you have the sea, you have the estuary. So, so much is what can be done there in terms of tourism. And then the culture of the people can also be properly leveraged to draw in more people. Because when we come, when they come in for all these leisure, uh, holiday, and uh, adventure activities. We can blend that effectively with the culture, the music, the dance, the, the foods, and all that. It can all be packaged. I mean, let's face it, Ghana has a problem with even selling of our local foods. It's one of the, one of the things we can get some of the best local dishes to eat in the water region. And along that landscape, if the Auckland, and I hear about 30 different kinds that there are, with the different types of dishes that can go with it. So why are we not marketing and promoting this? So we can do that and use this as an opportunity to market that entire landscape. So for the Keta and Law all the way to uh, Anyanui end, and from even all the way from, we can talk even from, even from Aplau coming, that entire southern landscape is ideal for beach tourism, for uh, the blue economy, tourism aspect and all that, which can be leveraged on to ensure that you have different types of facilities coming up along that stretch to and bring in the visitors or the tourists that we want within that area. Mm. Well, we'll, we'll take um, a quick break here on the probe. I see many of your messages that uh, would, would go through as well. Um, Sami, um, Samuel Lewuku, for instance, is talking about the fact that history has been made and he's so happy about this event. But let's take a quick break. When we return, we'll get more talking. This is The Probe, live on the Joy News channel, also on Joy 99.7 FM. We're on myjoyonline.com and all our social media platforms. We've been talking about the Hogbe Chocho Festival, the rich historic event that we saw over the weekend. But how do we leverage the cultural capital for national development? Also, for the development of the Volta region is key. Uh, many of you have been proffering some solutions, for instance. But Mr. Alexander Nketia um, is the regional director for OT and Volta region uh, with the Ghana Tourism authority my guest we also have Dela Gajanku uh, who is the AGI president for OT Volta and of course the eastern region and I'm sure that his line is fixed now and also uh, I've been joined on the phone this time by Agbutadwa Kumasa uh, he's um, a member of the planning committee and then also the Agbutadwa to the Te Agbozos too uh, let's see if um, we have a, a connection to him now welcome Agbutadwa Thank you, my sister. Thank you very much uh, for joining us this evening on the probe. So I, I was earlier um, asking, because we've been talking about the history behind this, what we saw with the Asantehene Otun Fosei to the second grace in this occasion, not just him. We saw Kintaki also um, joining, that's the Gamanche, and also the Kwewuhene also being a part of this, apart from the government delegation also that we saw. Let's talk about the thought process going into at 60. What really went into it, you say? Thank you, and good evening. Um, I am the spokesperson to the Aomasi of the Angon State. Apart from being the publicity committee, when we were planning the festival, we thought of our cultural values handed to us over the years by our ancestors. These values which were used by our ancestors in industry, in commerce, in politics, and it has helped sustain us as a people. Such values as honesty, hard work, forbearance, and love for one another. Now we realize that these values are not missing. People are now preferring money to 
love, they are preferring money to hard work, they want quick ways to get rich, and we don't want these things to be established to form part of our annual culture. So this year we decided to revisit the cultural values handed over to us and want to share the same with the present generation and the generation to come. So that is the reason why we choose even the team that we have for the, the festival. Now, on involving other chiefs to come and celebrate with us, we, have to, we want to reestablish the long-standing relationship between Anglo and Ashanti. Because in the year 1865, Wekudu I came to Anglo here and met Aparada Aholu. The poor Uhini also came. So the three of them signed a tripartite alliance. That was in 1865. Mm. And one clause in the tripartite alliance was to allow the Angles to establish Anglo in Kumasi and also allow the Ashanti to establish Kumasi in Anglo Unfortunately, the land given to them to establish Kumasi here has not been utilized. If you come to Anglo now, you will see Tobi Turo was two halves, Kumasi, Nashibi, Anglo That spells out to anybody that that was a site given to the Ashantis to establish Kumasi in Anglo so when we visited the Manchia Palace in 2018 for the Kwasi Festival, the Home Minister extended an invitation to the Otunfo, or said to the second, the Asandiyeni, to revisit Anglogan after 157 years. And we are lucky that has been accomplished yesterday. Mm. So the visit was to renew the already established relationship that made Anwanga to be part of Kumasi, and we have wished that Kumasi also become part of Anwanga in Anwanga here. So I, I would say that that is the reason why we involve the Asante Kenyan in the 60th anniversary celebration. Okay, well, we'll talk about what it will mean for the two, uh, your relationship, at least the Anglos and the Ashantis going forward. But really, how would you describe execution of this plan for the Hogwachocho Festival for 2022? Um, your own description, your own assessment of what you did over the weekend, at least it started from um, somewhere in October ending today. Uh, let's talk about it. What will be your description of what you've done so far as members of the committee? Yeah, we will say that it was a huge success. Success in the sense that that was the first time we managed a festival that had a lot of very, very important dignitaries in attendance. We have the Gamanche, who was the chairman. Then we have the Kwawini, who was a special guest of honor. And then the Asandihini was also there. Then we have other people from other areas, for example, you have Tavipa people who were also once part of the Anglo people, but migrated to stay in Tavipa. They all came. And our chiefs from Togo and our brothers from Asogi State, they are all there. And everybody enjoyed the program. So from our perspective, it was a huge success that we were able to bring all these diverse ethnic groups to come and be witnesses to a common what was the festival that uh, explains our journey, our migration from our earlier settlements to our present home? Mm. Well, the key question then will be how we are going to make or translate this huge success of the Ogwetutu Festival into something tangible for the region or the Angola state, for instance, is the key concern for some of your indigents. Yeah, we intend to leverage on what we have now been able to accomplish. Now, when we have festivals, our festival is a historical festival. It's not an economic festival. But when we have this, then it can pave the way for us to have another historic festival or another economic festival. So we are, we, at our review meeting, which we attended very soon, We'll be planning 
Now we can use the sources achieved to promote tourism, as said by Nketia. Our area is a tourism-prone area. The Golden Sandy Beach, the largest lagoon that you have, the Fort Resenstein, which was the only fort east of the Volta estuary. And then the, the, our drumming types. In fact, we have the most varied drumming types in our country. And then we also have a lot of cultural activities which are sellable. So in, at our review meeting, we'll be discussing the way forward, which will be after 60 years, what next? So the economic and the tourism aspects also will be brought in for discussion at our next meeting. Okay. Well, I'm sure at the next meeting, whilst you review um, the Ogotutu Festival, especially the Grand Eba, one key thing that um, sections of the media, including ours, have been reporting on is um, what actually transpired during uh, the vice president's speech, for instance. There are reports about being booed amongst others. You are members of the planning committee. What really happened? I was the MC for the program. And before his arrival, I cautioned the people that we invited the people to come to help us. And we cannot embarrass them on their visit. So when he arrived, there was a general calmness on the whole uh, assembly ground. Now, when the Asadeini spoke, people applauded him. When the Pohini also spoke, people applauded him. And then when he started speaking, he spoke, drawing attention to what the Asadeini said, the unity between Ashanti and the Anglo state. People are enjoying, and maybe they were clapping for him. When he entered the economic, when he mentioned, he said, let me now talk about the economics. That is when the trouble started. He mentioned, among others, that they build more airports than any other government. They build more roads than any other government. And the people who were there did not see the roads. They did not see the airports, they did not see the, uh, the, uh, the universities you are referring to. So that brought some agitation and it became very difficult to control the people because they were aware that what you were saying, none of them happened in the area. But when, uh, when he started talking of digitalization, we knew those areas were true. Uh, you cannot open your bank accounts using your mobile phone. But those came late. If we are to start with those ones, things which we are all aware that they really happened, then the people will accommodate. But it started with things which were strange to the people who were there. I did not brought the booing by the, by the youth. Mm. So he was booed. But then what did we do um, about the situation? Was it controlled later? Subsequently, everything came back to normal? Yes. And, and I was telling you that before he came, you had... we, we cautioned okay. the audience mm. that you have an office, and that office is a vice presidency office. It's like a state office which must be respected. Okay. That office is different from the person occupying the office. And if you do anything to the person, you also do the same thing to the office. But did you, is it the case that you envisaged that that was going to happen by a section yeah. of the audience? Yeah, I'm a government appointee in the municipal assembly here. And we have been following the visits in these days. So I even told them that the ground on which we are celebrating is a sacred ground. If you know of them misbehave, the gods there will visit them. And even though some people are saying, oh, Toby, you have gone so far. But I told them, we don't want anything to embarrass anybody. So when he came, his reception was very good. He went around to visit everybody. There was no hooting at that time. He went to sit down. There was no hooting. He started speaking. There was no hooting. But when he came to the topic of economics, that was when... It was very difficult to control okay. the youth and the people who were there. So it's only when he started talking about the issues about the economy that yes. um, the section of the crowd were booing at him. Okay. Yes, yes.
Well, I'm sure that as organizers, that's a downside that um, you feel disappointed with. Yeah, we, we, we wanted to disassociate ourselves with that attitude of our youth. That it wasn't a planned thing by the organizers of the festival. That was where we are asking them to give honor to everybody that we visited. I think by going to, you know, the economic hardship present in our country. So when somebody comes to downplay it as if everything is rosy for the people, by all means, they are human beings. They know what happened last two years and they know what is happening now. So that brought about that unfortunate incident. Okay. Well, um, that aside, though, it was still a rich historic event. In wrapping up with you, Agwe Tadra, so let's talk about um, that relationship that we're talking about because there's that general perception about the relationship between the Ashantis and the Anglos. So going forward, though, what would this meeting, what we saw over the weekend, what will it mean for generations to come, you would say? Yeah, I think we can go forward with exchange programs. We can send our students from the secondary schools to the secondary schools in Ashanti to spend two or three weeks understanding how they study their cultural behavior. Then you can also arrange intrastate trade. We have commodities here which were not common in Ashanti region. For example, in the past, our people traded in salt, in shallots, in small fish. Those things could be revived so that we exchange those, these items with what they have to give to us, like yam, like maize, and those products which were not uh, very common here. And apart from that, you can have intercultural festivals. Okay. Yeah. And that will be cultural exchange because when the British came, they only recognized three kingdoms. Mm. And the Anglo Kingdom was the first to be recognized. Okay. That was 1874. Before 1900, when Ashanti came on board. And then, and then the third one, the Dark one, came in mm. okay. 1900. So we have a, a close bond. And as I said earlier, the Ashantis and the Anglo have never engaged in any inter-tribal warfare. Okay. But they, they were allied because when the Ashantis went to the Western region and wanted to have access to the coast, they were denied by the Fantis. Okay. When they came to Accra, it was the same thing. R rich history. Allowed them R rich history that we would want to, um, you know, give a lot more time to subsubsequently. But I, okay. I, I must apologize that we're really out of time on this. So I, I would pause here. Subsequently, uh, on other programs, we'll continue this um, history lessons. We are grateful for your time. That's Agutadwa Kumasa. And I must apologize to Mr. Alexander Nketiah. And of course, to you, Dela, as well. Thank you so much for being a part of the show uh, this evening. We are indeed grateful. Subsequently, we'll talk more. And that's how we wrap up today's edition of the probe. I must say thank you to also Osei Bonsu, Safuka Tanka, who joined us earlier as well. He's a Monica Kao historian. That's all time will allow us for today. There's more when you log on to myjournalline.com. For our radio audience, A Walk with Jesus is up next. Many thanks on behalf of the entire team. Have a good evening. <laughs>